Welcome back everyone in the inflammation series and uh, we are going to elaborate more about uh, the acute inflammation talking specifically about the neutrophil and macrophages role in this process. Uh, in case you didn't watch the video of acute inflammation and the basis of it, you won't uh, really understand and comprehend every and each uh, detail of this video, so please watch it. Those are our objectives for today. So we are going to talk about the neutrophil function and arrival, which will include the margination, rolling, adhesion, transmigration, phagocytosis resolution, and pathologies of, uh, and defects that might happen in this process. And finally, we will touch briefly about the role of macrophages in managing the acute inflammation outcomes. Okay, so going to the first step of the neutrophil function and arrival. So first, we will talk about the normal blood vessel and the normal flow of the blood. So you have here, this is a blood vessel in here, okay? Or let's write it on the other side. So this is the blood vessel. Uh, inside the blood vessel, you will have the contents of the blood that contain the infl inflammatory cells. For example, let's put here neutrophils for the sake of the uh, acute inflammation. And it's usually central flow. So as you can see, it's a central flow. However, in cases of um, acute inflammation, you will have vasodilation, okay? So the vasodilation will lead to uh, margination or getting to the peripheral, so the neutrophils will come into the peripheral flow, okay? So this is the first step of the margination or uh, of the uh, neutrophil arrival. Now going to the second step, which is the rolling. So in here, you will have the margination as we stated before, and then uh, you will have a very small dot in here, which is the black one, as you can see, which are called the speed bumps or the selectins. So the main aim of the selectins is to uh, slow down the margination and the movement of the um, uh, neutrophils or lymphocytes in general. We have two types of selectin. We have the P-selectin, okay, and we have the E-selectin, okay. The P-selectin is usually mediated through histamine. And the E-selectin usually mediated through IL-1 and uh, TNF. From where do we get the P-selectin? The P-selectin, we get it from the endothelial cells. So we have here the endothelial cells that produce something called the, um, uh, something called the uh, wibble palade bodies. So the WPB. So you can remember it as you can see here. We have the P, which is going to give us the P-selectin mediated by histamine. Okay. From uh, there, you will have the neutrophils, as we stated before, after getting the, um, uh, the speed bumps or the selectins. You will have another molecule in here, which is the CAM, okay? And the neutrophils will get something out called the integrants, okay? Those two are going to be upregulated. So the integrant uh, and the um, CAM is, or the cellular adhesion molecule are going to be upregulated. The CAM is going to be mediated through TNF and IL-1 as, um, uh, uh, as in selectin E. Integrins are usually for attracting more neutrophils and they are mediated by the C5A and leukotriene B4, which are basically the mediators for uh, attracting neutrophils. And then they will bond together bond together or bind together and cause the adhesion, a firm adhesion in this site, okay? So what happens if we have a defect in the integrins? You will basically have something called leukocyte adhesion deficiency. The leukocyte adhesion deficiency, there will, uh, there will be dysfunction of the integrins and then there will, no, uh, there will be no adhesion of the neutrophils, okay? The, some clinical symptoms you can correlate to that is uh, the delayed separation of the umbilical cord. Uh, the delayed separation of the umbilical cord, you can see in the normal uh, situation when you have the umbilical cord, you will have there the apoptosis and necrosis of the tissue that will be followed by acute inflammation and uh, neutrophils. However, in this uh, kind of situation, the leukocyte adhesion deficiency, they will have the delayed separation of the umbilical cord because there is no necrosis, there, it's not followed by uh, acute inflammation. Other symptoms they might have, um, like neutrophils, uh, neutrophils are going to be high in the CBC, recurrent bacteria infection, and they won't be able to, uh, to form the pus because the neutrophils are not functioning well. 
Now going to the fourth uh, step, which is transmigration and chemotaxis. So it's basically when you want to get the neutrophils, okay, in here, outside into the interstitial space. So when it, when, uh, when it gets outside, this is the transmigration process. And when you have here the trigger, for example, the bacterial uh, products or the microbes, and then you want the neutrophils to, to go there, this is called the chemotaxis. So they usually go from the postcapillary venules, the same site where the fluid comes out, and the same site where you have the uh, increased vascular permeability. So they will come out and then go to the site or the uh, trigger of the acute inflammation and destruct it. Now, what, uh, what mediators will attract uh, the neutrophils in the case of acute inflammation? As we said, we have the uh, bacteria products, the IL-8, C5A, and the leukotriene B4. All of them were mentioned in the previous slides and also in the first video uh, series, uh, in the series of uh, inflammation. Now getting closer to the end where we have the phagocytosis. The phagocytosis is ba basically digestion and, and destruction of the um, uh, trigger or the infection. Uh, or the trigger of the acute inflammation, if you want to say. And it's usually enhanced by obstinance. Obstinance uh, are usually composed of IgG plus the uh, complement C3B uh, molecule, okay? So how is this going to happen? So you have here the neutrophil that's going to ha have pseudopods, okay, to, dige to digest this micro uh, microorganism inside, okay? And when it gets it inside, it will go into the cell so we have here the cell as you can see and then we have here the phagosome that should unite with the lysosome to begin the destruction process how do they do that they do it through um, the railroad trafficking so the railroad trafficking it's usually done uh, in the in the cell by micro Tubules, they are the one responsible of that. Okay, so using microtubules, you will have the railroad trafficking to uh, to get what we need as phagolysosome to destruct the organism or the trigger um, the uh, the trigger uh, organism of the acute inflammation. Okay, so what happens if we have a defect in the railroad trafficking? Okay, what happens is something called the Shidiak, okay, Higashi syndrome which is basically going to have the, um, the, uh, the defect of the, uh, this railroad trafficking, and they will have recurrent infections. They will have also neutropenia because those microtubules are also important in the mitosis and the division of mitosis. So they will not have the replication of neutrophils, so they will have neutropenia. They will also have um, uh, other symptoms and signs that will be mentioned later in the table of uh, neutrophil defect, uh, defects in arriving and function. Now, after we have um, the phagocytosed material inside the cell and fused with the lysosome, then how is this going to be destructed and how are we going to, to get rid of it? So basically, we have two pathways uh, of the destruction which is the O2 dependent and the uh, non-oxygen dependent uh, or oxygen independent pathway. The oxygen dependent pathway is, is basically based upon this reaction. So you have here the oxygen that will be transferred into, um, uh, into superoxide using the NADPH oxidase which is a high yield enzyme in here. And then using the superoxide dismutase, it will be transferred into uh, hydrogen peroxide and from that to what we call the bleach, okay, uh, using the myeloperoxidase enzyme. Okay, any defect of those will lead to a specific disease. For example, so when you have a defect in NADPH oxidase, you will have what we call the chronic uh, the chronic granulomatous disease, where they have multiple granulomas and multiple uh, infections and recurrent infections. Uh, I just want to say in here that some bacteria, um, some bacteria in here will produce the um, hydrogen peroxide, and then you will have the normal hydrogen peroxide in here, and then continue the pathway. However, some bacteria will also um, uh, give us the catalase enzyme. Okay, this catalase enzyme will inhibit the uh, hydrogen peroxidase, and then you will have um, a defect in this pathway. That's why the chronic granulomatous disease people will have the um, 
susceptibility more than others to get infected with catalase positive organism. For example, Staph aureus, uh, uh, some also Listeria species, E. coli, Klebsiella, and most importantly, Pseudomonas capacia. So Pseudomonas capacia is a really high yield um, organism that can affect the chronic granulomatous disease patients. Another disease that might happen when you have a deficiency of the myeloperoxidase. So when you have a deficiency of this enzyme, you will not be able to produce the bleach, okay? And then when you when you uh, are not able to produce bleach, what are the signs and symptoms? So usually the patient is going to be uh, asymptomatic. However, they will have increased risk of uh, candida species infections. So candida infections are going to be um, in those type uh, of patients. So this is for the uh, oxygen-dependent pathway. Now going to the oxygen-independent pathway. Uh, it's uh, usually less effective, so most effective is the oxygen-dependent. So uh, oxygen-independent is less effective and usually uh, using the secondary granules and the leukocyte, for example, the lysozymes. This is just a picture to uh, summarize what we have said in the previous slides from the margination up to the uh, chemotaxis and transmigration and also the phagocytosis. Now getting lastly into the resolution. So how do we get rid of the neutrophils? So neutrophils get uh, to have the apoptosis within 24 hours from the removal of the inflammatory stimulus. So let's just uh, show you the timeline, the normal timeline of the acute inflammation. So first of all, okay, we will have the first phase of it, okay? So the first phase, which is the fluid phase. So this is the peak here. We have the fluid phase and uh, the complement system coming here, and this is immediate response to acute inflammation. After that, you will have the neutrophil phase, which is overlapping a little bit. So you have here the neutrophil phase. Okay, which is usually going to peak, as we said here, 24 hours from the start of the acute inflammation. And after that, we will have the macrophages taking place after uh, two to three days. So here you will have the macrophages two to three days after the onset of the acute inflammation. So this is basically the timeline of acute inflammation uh, process. So the neutrophils will start to apoptose um, here, okay, and the macrophages will take place to give us the outcomes that we will talk about later that might happen with acute inflammation. Now getting to the table of defects in the neutrophils and func function and arrival. So first of all, we will have the leukocyte adhesion deficiency. As we said, you will have deficiency in the integrin, specifically the CD18, uh, the CD18 subunit. And the first initial presentation is going to be the delayed detachment of umbilical cord, and we have explained why, and uh, increased levels of uh, neutrophils and bacterial infections and lack of pus uh, formation. The Shidiak higashi syndrome, as we said, the defect in the protein trafficking or uh, the railroad uh, traffic, uh, and they will have pyogenic infections, uh, neutropenia, and we explained why. Uh, we have gr giant granules on histology because of the clumping of the phagosome inside the cells because it's not uniting with the, with the lysosome, and this is a high yield information in the histology. Defective uh, primary hemostasis, especially in the platelets, they will have albinism, and this can be also explained because of the protein trafficking defect. Melanocytes won't be able to um, uh, spread their um, uh, their pigment into the skin um, skin cells. Uh, you will also have the peripheral neuropathy, which is seen because the nucleus will have all the nutrients uh, for the uh, for the nerve, and it won't be able to send those nutrients into the periphery of the of the nerve. That's why they usually have peripheral neuropathy. Coming to the other defects, uh, like uh, chronic granulomatous disease, as we mentioned, uh, the defect in the NADPH oxidase, and they usually have the recurrent infection with catalase-positive bacteria and formation of the uh, granulomas, okay? And uh, we mentioned some catalase-positive bacteria, especially the Pseudomonas capacia and uh, the Staph aureus, okay? Uh, we have here the test for it, which is the nitro, uh, nitro blue tetrazoleum test. It's going to be positive in this case if it's colorless. However, in the MPO deficiency, it's going to be normal. There is no change in the MBT test. And now coming to the MPO deficiency or myeloperoxidase, they usually have the um, uh, increased risk of uh, candida species. However, most of the patients are asymptomatic. 
Lastly, coming to the last objective of this lecture, which is macrophage role. So what is the macrophage role in acute inflammation? We have to know first that macrophage is a, a derivative of uh, monocyte cells, and they usually use the independent killing. So they usually use the uh, oxygen independent uh, pathway for destruction of the of the trigger. Uh, now, what is the role? The role is basically in the outcomes. So the macrophages will, will determine the, uh, the, the outcome of the acute inflammation. Either it's going to have the complete resolution and it will restore the function again of the, of the tissue so now, um, and uh, it will be cleared, the whole acute inflammation will be stopped. Or it's going to lead to uh, healing by connective tissue, okay, uh, formation as in fibrosis and causing an abscess. Okay, an abscess formation that will cause the wall around the pus. So you will have the abscess or you will have progression into chronic inflammation. So for example, sometimes um, acute inflammation can happen with viruses. However, viruses cannot be uh, defended by um, or defeated by the neutrophils. So that's why you have to go into chronic inflammation. And from the chronic inflammation, we will get into the lymphocyte, which is basically the topic of our next video. Again, this is just a summary of what, of what we have said about the role or the outcomes of the acute inflammation. So the acute inflammation in here, either you will have the resolution, the full resolution and clearance of the, of the stimuli and the mediators of the acute inflammation, or you are going to have the pus formation and the, from the pus formation you will have abscess and the abscess will lead to uh, healing through fibrosis or you will have uh, um, the progression of uh, the acute inflammation into chronic inflammation and you will have angiogenesis and fibrosis and then you will have scarring and this usually happens when you have um, viral infections or chronic infections or persistent injury and also what happens during the autoimmune diseases. Finally, we came to the end of this lecture, which is elaborating more about acute inflammation and the pathogenesis and what's the role of neutrophils and macrophages. Those are the references we used, and thank you everyone for watching.